Howdy folks, my name's Randy Wilson and I was folk artist in residence here, folk arts director at the Highland Settlement School for maybe 20, 25 years. And uh, during that time I met Mr. James Steele, the writer. And he came here in the 1930s and stayed on. Lived up in a holler, uh, lived on Wolfpin Creek and came here to the Settlement School and worked for the Settlement School. He was a librarian and he took books around to children all over the county. And we're going to bring a book to you. And Mr. Steele wrote novels and poems and uh, short stories. But this book we're bringing to you today is a children's book. Well, children of any age. It's called Jack and the Wonder Beans. You may have heard of Jack and the Beanstalk. This is Mr. Steele's own version of that story. Mr. Steele and I went around to schools and colleges, universities together, and uh, we did a performance where I would do the music and Mr. Steele would read from his works. This time, I'm going to read this book, and you're going to listen to it and look at pictures from this book of Mr. James Steele, Jack and the Wonder Beans. Jack and the Wonder Beans by James Still. Way back yonder there was a widow woman and her son Jack, and they were poor as Job's turkey. The way some tell it, their home seat was here on Wolfpen Creek, or round about. Well, all Jack and his ma'am had was their home roof and a cow and a patch of land. They lived on garden sass and crumbled and made a plain bread and milk. Now hit come a rough winter, cold as doorknobs. They had to eat the corn seed held out to plant the sass patch in the spring, and come spring the cow went dry, dry as a hat. Jack's ma'am said to Jack, Take and sell the cow so we will have money for bread. So Jack hung a sign betwixt the cow's horns, said, Lady cow for sale anybody. He went up the road and down the road through brush and sawbriar, aiming for to sell the critter. But dry cows are hard numbers to unload, and she was all hide and bones, a walking shike poke. Yet he had bids. Would he swap to a crippled hammer with one ear gone? No. A poke for catching snipe? A jee-haw whammy diddle? Now, no. You can't eat every one of them. Then Jack got up with a gypsy who offered three beans for the cow. Not common beans, not regular beans. Gypsy said, wonder beans. Sow them and they will feed you your life teetotal. Now it looked like Jack was being tooken. I know. Jack was no simpleton. As the saying goes, to get ahead of Jack, you would have to have long ears and a bushy tail. Jack knew you couldn't buy wonder beans any day of the week, and three beans beat nothing, seeds for the sass patch. So he swapped, did Jack. Here Jack comes home with no money and no cow. No nothing except three beans. Fewer than fingers on a hand. Did his ma'am throw a conniption? She sizzled like a red-hot horseshoe in the cooling tub. And she took and throwed the seeds out of the window. She hooted to Jack. Upon my word and deed and honor, you couldn't be trusted to pack slops to a sick bear. You don't know beans. Jack quick jumped into bed and pulled the kivers over his head so as not to hear worse. The next morning, Jack, he heard something rustling outside the window. He cracked his eyes. He saw something look just like bean vines. Right, right as a rabbit foot. They were bean vines. The beans had come up. They were twisted together into a stalk thick as a blacksmith's arm. The stalk reached above the window, above the eaves, the roof. Up and up it went, up into the sky. You know, Jack... Independent as a hog on ice, ready for anything. He made to climb the beanstalk to see where it went, did Jack. Up and up, up and up and up. And directly he came to where the stalk leaned against a path. 
and Jack he stepped onto the path and went where it went, to a castle house. He went up the path and beat on a big door. It was the biggest, thickest door ever was. Jack banged on the door and a woman opened it, a high, tall, giant woman. Of a size, she could have put Jack in her apron pocket. Said Jack, cocky as they come, where's the master of this house place, your old man? And the high, tall woman said, he ain't come in yet, and woe when he does. He eats tadwhackers, the likes of you, boiled, fried, or baked in a pie, any which way when he's hungry. Now Jack wasn't easily frightened. And he said, Oh, sister, I'm hungry myself. What's a cooking? Well, what that giant woman done was feed him some crumble in, fed him three bowls to fatten him. She would eat Jack herself. She'd make a stew, seasoned with dill. And scarce had he finished then the biggest door ever was flew open, and in walked a giant seventeen feet tall, with feet like corn sleds, hands like hams, fingernails to match bucket lids, and the meanest eye ever beheld in this earthly world. The high tall woman quick popped Jack into the oven to hide him. She'd not let her husband have a shred of Jack. He would eat the meat and leave her the gristle. The giant came in, tromp, tromp, sniffing and snuffing and snorting. He came a-saying, Fee, fi, chew tobacco. I smell the toes of a tadwhacker. She said, You're smelling the crumbs in your beard from the two you wolfed down for breakfast. The giant said, Hmm. Even a giant knows when a woman says something, that's it. He set himself at the table and reached in under and fetched out two flax sacks of gold money emptied one on the table and began to count. His wife, she got busy polishing her kettle pot. She was making her readies for a jack stew sprinkled with dill. Counting beyond 33 will make any tombody drowsy. Beyond 99 hits worse. By 222, you're bedazed. Messing with figures always made the giant sleepy, and the more he counted, the dozier he got. Pretty soon he was snoring. Jack caught his chance when the high tall woman stuck her head in the kettle to rub clean a spot. He jumped out of the oven. He grabbed a sack of gold and took off like Snyder's hound for the beanstalk, and nobody was in knowance of it. Well, Jack and his man bought a pretty cow with ribbons on her horns. They planted a sass patch. They lived in ease. They sat on the porch and hung their feet over the banister. That was all they had to do, and I reckon you'd say they were satisfied teetotally. Not Jack. As the saying goes, he hadn't got his barrel full and curiosity was stinging him. So one fine, clever day, Jack took his foot in his hand and gave it another crack. He clambered up the beanstalk. Up and up and up, Jack did. When Jack knocked on the biggest, thickest door ever, there was the high, tall woman, and her right proud to see him. He'd not sidestep her stew this time. Again, Jack said, Oh, sister, I'm hungry. What's cooking? She fed him five bowls of crumble in. She'd fatten him plump. When the seventeen-foot giant showed up, she popped Jack into a skillet, a skillet the size to fry a whole beef to hide him, and clapped on the cover. The giant came in, tromp, tromp, sniffing and snuffing and snorting. He came a-saying, Fee, fi, pickle, and cracker, I smell the toes of a tadwhacker. Woman said, You're smelling your upper lip. The grease from the couple you gobbled for breakfast. Even a giant with feet like corn sleds understands you can't out-argue a woman, so he hushed on that. He says, 
Oh, wife, bring me my little bainty hen that lays gold eggs. Even a woman big enough to tuck a boy in her apron pocket knows that when a man speaks, he's spoken. So she brought the hen. The giant says to the hen, says, Hen lay. The hen did. Laid a gold egg. And another, and another, every time he said to lay. The giant counted. And here he was messing with figures again. And he got sleepy. The high, tall woman, she got out her kettle pot and began to polish it for her jack stew, stew with dill. The bainy hen kept laying, the giant kept tallying, and fairly soon the giant was nodding and snoring. And when the woman had her head so deep in the kettle she couldn't hear thunder, Jack caught his chance. He threw off the skillet cover. The cover made a racket that would have woke seven sleepers. The giant cracked his eyelids, and Jack grabbed the little hen and lit out for the beanstalk. The giant waked and took after him, and did Jack ski down. You could have shot marbles on his shirt tails. Jack made it to the beanstalk with the giant shaving his heels. He came down the stalk in a shower of leaves and a hail of beans, and the giant couldn't catch up with him. When Jack tipped the ground, he hollowed to his man, Fetch the axe! Jack's man fetched a double-bitted axe, which could cut coming and going. Jack cut down the beanstalk with a single blow, and that was the end of the seventeen-foot giant with feet as big as corn sleds and fingernails to match bucket lids, and the meanest eye in the world earthly. And an odd thing, on earth a little hen would lay only common brown eggs, regular eggs. Ah, no matter. Jack had his barrel full enough, and he bought a second cow with ribbons to her horns, a pretty cow, one to come fresh while the other was dry. They lived on bainy eggs and garden sacks and crumbled in there and after. And nobody could rightly say Jack didn't know beans. Now, no. Oh! Uh-huh. 